Hi, Facebook. I have a very, very important message from the Lord, and it's just going to be a very difficult thing and topic for me to talk about. But the Lord had a, He had to talk me into talking about this because I didn't want to do it. But I think it's going to really help a lot of people. And I'm going to talk about things that are going to make us both feel uncomfortable, but it's a necessary topic, okay? So the title of this message is, Are You Having Sex With Demons? And just to talk about that makes my stomach upset. And I feel this nauseous knot in my stomach just to think that we can have sex with demons. And I'm going to discuss how that can even happen. And I'm going to go to, um, first I'm going to start at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, I'm, I'll back this up with the word. I never just say anything for the heck of it. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15 through 20. And let's start there, okay? Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Now I want to point out that this word he says, for the two, he says, shall become one flesh. So already there, we're talking in the context of marriage. And he's saying, will you take your body that, that Jesus paid the price for and join it to a harlot? That's a person who is a fornicator. Are you going to be joined in a marriage to someone who's a fornicator? A harlot, a fornicator, right? Someone who is having sexual practices outside of marriage. Uh, we're talking about um, porn sites, video sex, phone sex, um, all kinds of, of lewd conduct, conversations. Um, maybe you're even voyeurism, um, incest, you name it. This covers everything. What is your partner doing when you're not watching? What kind of behavior they're engaged in? So, A lot of people think, and this is this is really the, my heart tonight. A lot of people think that if they bring in worldly sexual play into the marriage, that it's going to improve it somehow. But what you don't understand when you bring in worldly sexual things into a Christian marriage, you're opening the door to demons. So now you have a threesome in the marriage where it's you, your partner, and the devil or demon that they invited in. Because if you think that having sex and watching pornography with your, your spouse is going to help improve your marriage, you're deceived because you're, all you're doing is bringing a spirit of adultery, perversion, fornication into that marriage now you're bringing in demons and you're introducing them to your spouse and if they get demonized the chances are now they're going to in turn get into that kind of thing and they might even commit adultery and leave you because you introduced them to those demons maybe perhaps you're watching pornography and you think that's all great but now, what's happening is you think 
that's kind of familiar to you. So now you introduce it into your marriage and um, you're, you're bringing in those demons into to your spouse. But what does God say in his word? We are members of Christ. We're not members of a harlot or fornicator, adulterer. We're not supposed to be. If your husband or wife is being that way, if your husband or wife is into fornication and adultery, pornography, whatever they're into, you can't be involved with that. They're opening the doors for your life for those demons to come into you. Uh, it sound, as sick as this may sound, there's a lot of Christians, a threesome. It's them, their spouse, and the demons that they're invited into their marriage bed. But let's look at what Hebrews chapter um, 13, 4 says. Hebrews 13, 4. This is really, uh, makes my stomach turn, but I have to talk about it. Okay. Hebrews 13, 4. Let me look here. Please, I, 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 this is really serious stuff we're talking. Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled. But fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. God will judge you if you are defiling the marriage bed. Our marriage bed is supposed to be symbolic of the bedchamber of Christ. Would you bring a demon into the bedchamber of Christ and say, sleep with us, Jesus? Would you ask the devil to sleep with you? Well, I'm telling you right now, that's exactly what you're doing. When you're trying to introduce worldly things into your marriage bed, like sex toys, like um, pornography, uh, another person. Maybe your spouse doesn't know about the other person, but you're with another person and them. You're in a threesome. That is bringing demons into that marriage bed and you're defiling it. What does God say? He is saying that fornicators and adulterers, God will judge and he will judge you. He will judge you. You can't be into pornography and expect God to bless you. He won't bless you. As a matter of fact, there's a curse that comes with, with adultery. Let me discuss that with you. Let's go to Proverbs 6.26. Proverbs 6.26. There's a lot of people in bondage in these areas. Proverbs 6.26 says, For by means of a harlot a man is reduced to a crust of bread, and an adulteress will prey upon his precious life. What I'm saying is poverty is one of the curses of adultery. And what does Jesus say? What does Jesus say is adultery? A lot of us want to just sweep this under the carpet and think that only physical contact is adultery, and that's a lie. Jesus raised that standard in Matthew chapter 5, 20 says, You have heard that it was said of them of old. Thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say to you that whosoever looks on a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. This goes both ways. Even a woman can commit adultery in her heart if she's desiring a man that's not her husband. Okay? A, a woman can cause a man to commit adultery if she's being seductive. It's called lasciviousness. God will judge that. If you're walking in the spirit of seduction, if you're a man and a woman, or a woman, you are already allowing demons to use you to seduce someone else. 
It's the spirit you're carrying, the spirit you're walking in. And God is going to judge that. You can't be walking in a seductive spirit. There's no such thing as being sexy. All that word being sexy is being seductive. And that is attached to an actual spirit called a seducing spirit. So if you're being sexy, sensual, showing your breast, wearing tight pants, uh, wearing long slits on your, on your thing, wearing your little yoga pants where you can see everything, and all those yoga pants are is glorified pantyhose that are a little bit thick, and you're showing your crotch and your butt. You're being seductive, and you're operating under a seducing spirit. That is not from God. God has called us to be holy. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 29 of Matthew 5. And if their right eye offend thee, pluck it out. Cast it from thee, for it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Hey, some of some of your eyes that are offending you, something that's stumbling you might be your TV. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. If it's your TV that's stumbling you, get rid of it. It's causing you to sin. Get rid of it. Jesus saying it's like, you have to pluck your eyeball out, then you do that. Whatever you have to do, the seriousness of committing adultery, Jesus said this is so serious, you might as well... Just pluck your eyeball out, then the sin. If it's causing you to stumble, you need to get rid of it out of your life. Maybe it's your secretary. Cut it. Get another one. Maybe it's an ex-friend on Facebook who keeps contacting you. Cut it. Pluck it out. Maybe it's your laptop. Cut it. Hit it out. Maybe it's your cell phone. Get a flip phone. What the seriousness of having an adulterous heart, Jesus says, I'm going to judge that. You've got to take this serious. Uh, I'm going to say that 90% of the people that would come to me for counseling and deliverance were inactive or were inactive sexual sin. Sexual sin, well, you will find the sexual sin Almost on the top of every list in the Bible, it will start with sexual sin first. Always. For example, and I just, if you go to Galatians chapter 5, 19 through 21. Let's go there. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Right there. I didn't even notice that. I mean, I, I knew that, but I read it again and it just became sexual sin is at the top of the list. Adultery. Having sex while you're married. And we already discussed that adultery can be pornography. Okay? Even it, it, it's in your heart. You can have an adulterous heart. You can have adulterous eyes. I'm going to get to that. And then um, fornication, having sex outside of marriage. Uncleanness means perversion. It means having unclean thoughts, having an unclean speech. Maybe you're telling dirty jokes. And lasciviousness, which I discussed just a little bit ago, which is being seductive, arousing people. To lust after you and to desire you. These are sins. And the Bible says, if you continue reading, as I've told you in time past, that they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. This stuff will keep you out of heaven. There's statistics out right now that 50% of men and pastors in the church are hooked on pornography. They're not plucking out the eye that offends them. They're not doing what they have to do to get rid of it and cut that sin. They're not. If we continue here 
It says right here in Matthew chapter 5, verse 30. Okay? If thy right hand offend thee, cut it off and cast it from thee, for it is more profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that their whole body should be cast into hell. Again, what happens? The first, you're committing adultery in your heart with your eyes. Then what happens? Then the hand gets involved. Jesus says, cut off the hand if you have to. What do hands do after they look at things? They masturbate, right? Jesus, Jesus, he, I mean, he nails it. He's like, no, it starts with the eyes, goes to the heart, then goes to the hand. Deal with it. Cut it off. Cut it off. And it says here, and so whoever shall put away his wife, let him give her writing of divorcement. But I say unto you, it has been said, whoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say to you, that whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her is that is divorced commits adultery. I'm not getting to get into the divorce thing right now, and I'm not, because that's another teaching. But what I am going to say is, you're committing adultery in your marriage when you're watching pornography, talking to other people, whatever you're doing, you're committing adultery. God's word says, as I read in Proverbs 6, 26, you'll be reduced to a crust of bread. That means poverty is going to come upon you. That's one of the curses. You are bringing in demons if you have you're involved with pornography you're bringing in demons into your marriage relationship please do not give in to your husband or wife if they decide to make your marriage a threesome where it's you them and the devil okay that's a lot of men i'm going to say they're so used to what they see on the pornography sites they want to do that with their wives, and they think that that's going to improve their love life or whatever. Or the wife may think that. That's a bunch of garbage. It's a life from the pit of hell. You're bringing the devil into your marriage bed, and you're defiling the marriage bed. How's about if you ask the Holy Spirit and Jesus to come into the marriage relationship? Instead of a familiar spirit that you've been watching on a porn site. How's about you bring something holy into that bed? Why are we so twisted? We have allowed years and years of programming, TV program, to make us believe that somehow the world has something better to offer than what God, what God can give us. You don't think God doesn't want to be part of our marriage, the intimacy? How's about if we become intimate with one another and God in the center of that? You don't think that would be beautiful? You don't think that would be fulfilling? I don't think a lot of us even know what that's like because we're so programmed by the world and this worldly thinking that we think that we have to have some kind of lustful thing involved in order for it to to even be a fulfilling time of intimacy with your spouse. And that's just, it's gross when you start thinking about how you're bringing in the demon that your maybe your husband or wife brought in from a porn site or from talking to someone who is seductive, bringing in lust and perversion demons into the marriage bed. And, and then you're like, going along with it to make them happy there's nowhere in the word that tells you to submit to your husband or wife's desires sexual desires that involve worldly familiar perversion and lust spirits there's nowhere in the word that tells you you have to 
become a threesome with a demon in your marriage bed. I, I've, I've, I've been in these uh, sites with these women. I hear them talk about how they give in to their husbands. And they do whatever they tell them to keep them happy. But what you're doing is you're feeding their demons or you're keeping their demons happy. And that's all you're doing. Or you're keeping your wife's demons happy. What if your husband is, um, or wife, what if they're using or drinking and getting high and then you're having sex with them? Again, you're opening the door to demons in, their, uh, in your life because you're, you're going along with what they're doing. So I'm going to discuss another curse that comes upon people who get involved in a sexual way um, with people who are practicing sorcery, which is drugs, drunkenness, getting intoxicated, high, watching porn sites, talking on video chats. You are opening the door to the devil and you're having a threesome with the devil. And that's hideous. But um, Revelation chapter 2, verse 20 through 23. This is a very familiar spirit to a lot of you. Thank you for uh, you who are watching right now. Here's Jesus. This is Jesus' words right here. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. Because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual morality, and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sickbed, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death and all the churches shall know that I am the one who searches the hearts and minds, the minds and hearts. And I will give to each one of you according to your works. So here you go. When you allow your husband and wife to seduce you into practicing or doing sexual things that are unclean and unholy, you're allowing that Jezebel spirit to enter into this the relationship. If you allow that spirit of seduction, when you ever you start uh, operating a spirit of seduction you are allowing a Jezebel spirit to enter in. And I found that when men or women come into a relationship in a wrong way, they didn't they commit a fornication or adultery in the relationship and they get together, the husband and wife, even if they get married, it causes a Jezebel and Ahab spirit to come into that relationship. And it's horrible. I've seen a lot of Horrible things come out of it because these demon spirits now enter into that marriage. And now we have a Jezebel spirit and Ahab spirit running amok in the marriage. And we're going to have a time of repentance afterwards. It says here, I gave her time to repent of her sexual morality. She did not repent. That's a lot of pride that goes along here. Indeed, I will cast her into a sick bed and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to tell a, a story that is going to probably freak some of you all out, but I have to tell it. So I ran into a, a young man one day, and he told me his mother was very sick. She was in the sick bed. And I found out from him that his mother used to be the pastor's wife, a pastor's wife. And that she committed adultery and she got involved with an atheist. And there she was in the sickbed. She was under this Jezebel curse. And I tried to um, talk to her and bring her to repentance. But I don't know if she could even understand me. 
And the um, the husband, the atheist, was trying to prevent me from ministering the word of God to her. Kind of almost threw me out. But he also was sick. They were both sick and with unknown disease. They were really under, the Lord showed me they were under this curse, the Jezebel curse. Sometimes people get sick or get cast in tribulation and they don't understand this because they they came into the, under a Jezebel curse because they they uh they came into that place of adultery and they never repented of it. They came under that place of seduction and they never repented of it. Um and it says, and I will give to each one according to your works. That's the, that's Jesus. That's Jesus. And, and if it's you right now, if you come into your relation, marriage relationship, and if you allowed your spouse, your husband or wife, to talk you into doing sexual things, sexual acts, to keep them happy, that are impure and unholy, and that are they are worldly. They, they come from a place of a familiar spirit of adultery. I, I, I'm asking you right now to repent of that. Say, Lord, I ask you to forgive me. I repent for giving into a familiar spirit my husband and wife were walking in. And that's a familiar spirit of adultery, familiar spirit of seduction, uh, a spirit that they were carrying when they were high and drunk and wanted to have sex with me. I, I want to repent of that, Lord. I, re, I repent of giving into a, a spirit of seduction from a Jezebel spirit. Just repent in your heart right now. Start thinking about all the times that you came into this marriage bed in a threesome. It was you, your spouse, and the demons that had entered in and it had been invited in through these acts. There's Christians practicing things that they've seen in the world, and they think that because it's in their marriage, that within the, the confinements of marriage, that it's okay. But what they don't understand is they invited a wrong spirit into the marriage bed. They, don't, they didn't invite the Holy Spirit. They invited a wrong spirit. They invited a spirit of adultery and fornication and seduction and Jezebel. They invited a wrong spirit into that marriage bed. Just because you're married doesn't make it right. It doesn't make it holy. It doesn't sanctify these sexual acts that were learned in the world. And now you want to bring them into your marriage bed. When is the last time you asked the Holy Spirit to become part of your sexual intimacy with this, your spouse. When's the last time you asked God to be the center of that marriage? Or have you been so deceived into thinking the only way that you and your wife are going to have any kind of fun is if you do the kind of things that you saw you've been watching in those porn videos? I'm sorry to tell you, brother, sister, that's deception. And it's defiling the marriage bed. Okay. So we, we know that the, the eyes are a window to the soul. We always heard that. And um, let's just go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter right now. Verse 2. I mean, these are serious things, but they have to be talked about. Because there's just so much compromise in these in the church when it comes to sexuality. It's not supposed to be dirty. It's not supposed to be sexy. It's supposed to be holy. And that's um, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 14 through 15. The Bible says, Having eyes full of adultery, they cannot cease from sin enticing unstable souls they have a hard train in covetous practices and are cursed children what was i talking about we can come under the curse if we're walking in this place of disobedience 
having eyes full of adultery, your eyes full of adultery, your eyes full of adultery, and cannot cease from sin. Once the eyes of adultery come in, it's hard to cease from sin. You have to repent of that, my brother and my sister. They have forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. Balaam got the people of God to come under a curse by getting them to lust after women. Do you know what I'm saying? You can bring your whole marriage, your life, your spouse under a curse. You and your spouse under a curse of poverty, of sickness, because you have allowed demons to come into your marriage bed and defile it. You are having sex with demons. And it's probably why you're under so much torment and agony. And you know it's wrong inside. But you are putting, you're fearing your spouse more than you're fearing God. Man and woman of God, I'm going to tell you right now, you need to stop. Stop what you're doing. God is not going to look away and wink at this sin. He's not. Like I discussed, there's, good, there's curses attached to this. But here's the prophetic word the Lord gave me. I heard the Lord say, will you trust me to satisfy you? Will you allow me to satisfy the deepest longing in your heart? Will you allow me to be the affirmation, acceptance, and love you need? Will you trust me with every decision? Will you trust me to lead you? Will you trust me to provide Will you trust me to meet every need? Can you trust me to protect you? I long to be the resource and the person you go to for everything first. First. How else can I show you my faithfulness? How else can I show you my love? This is the job of being your father. Maybe your earthly father wasn't there for you. I am there for you. I am willing to help you. I am a faithful and good God, even when you don't deserve it. While in your deepest depravity, I sacrifice it all to be in a relationship with you. Why? Because your life matters to me. I value you. You are my treasure, the affection of my heart. I find myself longing for you like a mother who hasn't seen her child for a long, long time. Every time you open your eyes, I smile. It's a new day. A day that we can spend together and get to know one another. Don't you see the cross? was an instrument of reconciliation so I can once again be your father and you can be my son and daughter. Come now to me so I can heal you, fill you. It will be my greatest delight. So let's pray. Father, right now, I just repent of having a threesome in my marriage. Father, I repent of allowing worldly ways in my marriage and let it defile my bed, marriage bed. Father, I repent of allowing seduction and Jezebelic spirits to entice me to commit fornication. Father, I ask you to forgive me for allowing my eyes to become eyes of adultery, for not plucking out what's offended you and cutting it off and getting rid of it. It doesn't matter 
if it's my TV, if it's my computer, if it's my cell phone, Father, I just want to please you. I want to trust you to fill every need and satisfy my heart. I thank you, God, that every person that watches this will come under your conviction and you'll bring repentance and repair, adjustment and repair to every area that you speak to them about. And right now, I just find every demon. I command every demon that came in to defile them. I bind them over their mind, will, and emotions. I command demons of adultery and fornication, perversion, lasciviousness, seduction, fornication, every kind of unclean spirit. I command it to come out of you right now in Jesus' name. Commanded to come out of you right now. If you repented, I command these spirits to come out of you right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit that came in to defile you, I commanded to come out of you right now in Jesus' name. If you're coughing, just cough. Get a bucket. Get out, you spirit of Jezebel. Get out your spirit of Ahab. Get out your spirit of, of fornication and adultery. Get out your spirit of perversion. Get out your spirit of drunkenness. Get out your spirit of sorcery. Get out your spirit of witchcraft. Get out your spirit of pride. In the name of Jesus, every unclean spirit that came through impure and immoral sexual acts, I commanded to come out of you in the mighty name of Jesus right now right now i just pray right now for complete deliverance complete conviction and father if you break every mindset every mindset father that from here on out they will always invite you to be part of the met their sexual intimacy in their marriage lord they will no longer invite unholy and unclean spirits into that place where only you belong. Father, teach us to be holy in every area. Father, break the deception off your church that thinks that the only way we can have fun, the only way that we can, we can have true, beautiful intimacy in the relationship is to bring the devil in. Such a deception, Father. I thank you that we bring you in into every act and into every part of our life. And I know only then you'll satisfy that thing in our soul that, that just really needs to be ministered to. And Father, I pray that if anyone's been molested, sexually violated, and these spirits came in, I just command healing, restoration, and deliverance. I command those spirits that came in through sexual molestation, get out. Get out of their spirit right now. Every spirit that came in pornography, get out in Jesus' name. Every spirit that came in through incest, get out in Jesus' name. Get out of them. Get out right now, the devil. Let go, loose these people in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I thank you for what you're going to do. If you have any questions, you can always message me. Um, you are loved. And... Please send this video out. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. I'm going to do more, more of these kind of videos. Subscribe to my channel. And um, we'll talk to you soon, okay? God bless. Good night.